Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom, the podcast where we examine the mysteries of the human body like curious tourists, peeking behind the scenes to see what makes our cells tick. I'm Ethan Foster, the resident observer of the human condition, known for a dry wit and an unwavering love of comfortable slippers. And I'm Alara Skye, the brilliant mind with a sharper tongue, ready to take a deep dive into health topics that most people never knew they needed. Today, we'll be unveiling the secret world of senescent cells, those so-called retired cells that apparently have a big say in whether your paper cut heals quickly or becomes a lifelong companion. Right, because who doesn't want to know why a tiny scrape on your knuckle decides to linger for weeks once you hit a certain age? We're here to talk about the role these aging cells play. Sometimes they're helpful. Sometimes they're, well, less than helpful. It's like the difference between someone handing you a bandage and someone ripping it off repeatedly just to complain about your technique. Turns out these senescent cells can either assist with healing or sabotage it. And we're going to explore why and how. Let's set the stage with a bit of background. Senescent cells are basically cells that have stopped dividing. They're done. They're on permanent coffee break. But they don't just quietly fade away. Instead, they hang around, sending out a barrage of signals. Yes. Think of them like old high school teachers who refuse to fully retire and keep showing up at the school board meetings. Sometimes they share valuable insights, but sometimes they're stuck in a bygone era, criticizing every modern change in the curriculum. And that's where the trouble starts. We used to think of these cells as purely malevolent. Scientists pinned them for contributing to aging and inflammation and all sorts of ills. But now, we know there are nuances. In some contexts, they help the healing process, like Good Samaritans passing out water at a marathon. And in other contexts, they create inflammation that drags everything down. Exactly. Let's break down the difference. These senescent cells release the SASP, senescence-associated secretory phenotype. It's a mouthful. We can think of it as the cell's version of a group chat. Some messages are, guys, we need more help over here, and others are, never mind healing, let's panic indefinitely. The result can either be constructive or destructive. And there are two main categories we're going to focus on, P16 high senescent cells and 21 high senescent cells. Different protein markers, different behavioral patterns, P16 high cells, in many cases, are actually helpful in wound repair. Meanwhile, P21 high cells often keep the inflammation pot boiling long after the soup should be served. Great analogy, especially if you love overheated soup. In an experiment, scientists removed P21 high senescent cells in mice and wound healing sped up, particularly in female mice. It's as if clearing out the rowdy troublemakers let the real cleanup crew finish the job. Right, so if we compare it to a construction project, P16 high cells coordinate the crew for the first phase, then know when to quietly exit. P21 high cells, on the other hand, are like managers who linger too long, yelling contradictory orders. Eventually, the site is in chaos. And that chaos is especially visible in chronic wounds. We're talking wounds that refuse to heal in a normal time frame, common in older adults or folks with diabetes. In those scenarios, the negative types of senescent cells pile up, perpetuating inflammation and preventing tissue repair. It becomes a feedback loop of gloom. The wound can't close because the environment is too hostile. And the environment remains hostile because these senescent cells won't leave. The SASP is constantly sending out inflammatory signals. So you end up with a prolonged open wound, excessive inflammation, and a risk of fibrosis, which is basically overactive scarring. That can lead to discomfort, more complications, and less functional healing. No one wants to see that scenario. Fortunately, researchers are exploring ways to remove or modify these harmful senescent cells. Enter senolytics, which act like a targeted demolition crew, specifically clearing out problematic cells without harming the helpful ones. We also have senomorphics, which aim to tinker with the signals these cells release, dialing down the negativity. Instead of bulldozing the entire building, senomorphics might just fire the bad foreman and hire a better communicator. It's a promising field because not all senescent cells are evil. Some are beneficial in early wound repair. We don't want a scorched earth approach that wipes out everything in its path. We want precision. Which brings us to the natural compounds that might help. Fisetine and quercetin are among the big names. Fisetine is found in strawberries and apples, and quercetins in apples, onions, broccoli, berries, and so on. These are considered senolytic compounds that can help your body clear out at least some fraction of the harmful retired cells. So next time you see onion skins, don't just toss them in the compost. They actually have a high concentration of quercetin. You can brew them into a broth, assuming you're brave enough to try onion skin tea. I imagine it's a soup you either love or vow to never taste again. I'd call it the culinary equivalent of a dare. But hey, people do it, and apparently it delivers a concentrated punch of quercetin. Meanwhile, fisetin is most famously associated with strawberries, so maybe that's a more appealing taste. P16 
Picture yourself sipping a strawberry smoothie brimming with senolytic promise. I guess it's a fair trade-off. Onion peel broth or strawberry smoothie. Which would you choose? I'll take a guess you're in the strawberry camp. As for me, I might be adventurous once a month with the onion brew, just for the bragging rights. Then I'll revert to strawberry mode. Now, beyond these specific compounds, there's a bigger lifestyle picture. Research suggests that living in a way that reduces cellular stress helps maintain a balanced population of senescent cells. That includes healthy eating, regular exercise, and minimizing daily chaos whenever possible. Of course, we can't skip the latest conversation about linoleic acid, LA. It's a polyunsaturated fatty acid found in seed oils, and apparently overconsumption can create metabolic mayhem, pushing cells towards senescence. Some of us might be unknowingly bathing ourselves in this stuff if we rely on processed foods and cheap vegetable oils. Indeed. The advice is to avoid or limit processed foods that typically contain high levels of seed oils. Cook more at home, choose better fats, and maybe cut down on the donut habit if that donut's fried in questionable oil. I'll be honest, donuts are a tough one to resist. But you can do a homemade version with better oil, or just scale back the frequency so it's not a daily ritual. The key is not turning your diet into a carnival of LA-laden treats. And the reason behind this? Too much LA can lead to oxidative stress, and that's one factor driving cells into senescence. If they retire too early or in large numbers, we get more of the dreaded P21 high crowd that impedes healing. So what we're advocating is a more balanced approach. The body can handle a certain level of stress, but if you push it too far, you wind up with an entire generation of cells calling it quits prematurely. Then we're back to slow healing wounds and potential chronic issues. It's a domino effect. That's why it's worth paying attention to things like dietary choices, exercise, and stress management. They all feed into how your cells behave. Absolutely. Let's circle back to the wound healing aspect, since that's a particularly relatable example. We've all cut a finger while chopping vegetables or scraped a knee. When you're younger, it's a matter of a few days before it's barely noticeable. But as you age, you might ask, why is this scratch still here two weeks later? Yes, and that can sometimes point to a buildup of the unwanted senescent cells. The body's repair crew is stuck in an endless argument on the job site. Imagine the frustration of the healthy cells trying to move forward. The good news is that focusing on senolytic foods or even senolytic supplements can give your body a tool to clear out some of these troublemakers. And if future therapies hone in on specific cell markers like P21, we might see even more powerful interventions. But until that day, we can start by taking small steps, literally. Even a daily walk can help regulate inflammation and metabolic function, which in turn helps keep senescent cells in check. You see, your immune system is actually designed to remove these senescent cells once they've done their job. The trouble begins when the immune system can't keep up. If you're too stressed, poorly fed, or lacking in physical activity, your immune system may be otherwise occupied. That's when the retirees take over City Hall, so to speak, passing endless ordinances that hold up progress. Chronic wounds are the perfect example of this bureaucratic gridlock. And ironically, the older we get, the more of these senescent cells accumulate. So we need to be more proactive. In youth, you can sometimes skate by on pizza and energy drinks without feeling immediate consequences. But midlife and beyond, it catches up. It's like that one friend who can party all night in their 20s and still show up for an 8 a.m. college class. By their 40s, a late-night Netflix binge leaves them feeling like they've aged a decade. The system just can't handle the same level of abuse. Exactly. And the cellular version of that is the immune system's decreasing capacity to purge problematic cells. So we want to support it through antioxidants, balanced nutrition, enough sleep, and minimal exposure to toxins like excessive seed oils. It's not rocket science, but we often forget it. Yes, we do. Now, for those who really want a deep dive, you can look at how certain triggers, like oncogenes, DNA damage, oxidative stress, push cells into senescence. But the bottom line is that senescent cells are not all bad. We just need the right balance. The dual nature is important. We need them briefly to orchestrate the early steps in wound healing but we don't want them taking an extended vacation on the wound site. Once their role is done, they should make a graceful exit. A graceful exit would be nice, but in chronic wounds, they basically throw a never-ending party. All the stress signals pile up, leading to perpetual inflammation. The tissue can't rebuild properly. You get excessive collagen, leading to fibrosis and even more complications. Those poor fibroblasts, they try to do their job producing collagen, but they end up overdoing it because of the constant instructions from senescent cells. The result is a thick, fibrotic scar that isn't what nature intended. And for older individuals, that's compounded by a naturally weaker immune system and possibly slower collagen production in normal conditions. So, you have a double whammy, less robust healing, plus an environment riddled with negative signals. It makes sense that researchers are super interested in finding interventions that can tip the balance back. 
The idea of selectively removing or at least reprogramming P21 high cells is quite appealing. Imagine a therapy that gently pulls aside the troublesome cells, hands them a retirement certificate, and sends them packing without harming the supportive P16 cells. That's the dream scenario. Meanwhile, we do have some early data on how compounds like facetin or quercetin might extend lifespan by reducing senescent cell load. There are interesting preliminary findings even in contexts like COVID-19 where senolytics could be beneficial. Yes, it's a burgeoning field, but even if we're not rushing to pop new senolytic pills, we can adopt more produce in our diet. Apples, strawberries, onions, broccoli, leafy greens, tea. Each choice can help shift the balance. And if you're feeling adventurous, you can try that onion peel broth. I'm half tempted to brew some up tonight just to see if I feel like a brand new person in the morning. If you come in next episode glowing like a superhero, we'll know the onion brew is legit. We'll also know you've single-handedly changed the skincare industry. Elara's onion beauty secret has a nice ring to it. Stranger things have happened. For now, though, let's not discount simpler steps. Managing stress is huge. Chronic stress can disrupt immune function and keep your body flooded with cortisol, which complicates healing. We can't all live in a Zen monastery, but maybe carve out a few minutes each day to breathe deeply, meditate, or do something that calms the mind. Better sleep patterns help too. Yes, because your body repairs itself most efficiently during restful sleep. Skimping on sleep is like shutting down the repair shop just when all the broken machinery needs servicing. Then senescent cells might accumulate because no one's cleaning them up. So many factors, but the key point is that senescent cells aren't purely the bad guys. They're nuanced. In small, controlled doses, they facilitate healing. Left unchecked, they cause trouble. Understanding that is the first step toward better strategies. Another interesting piece is the shift from burning glucose to burning fats. Some evidence suggests that when your body overdoes it on fat oxidation, it can create a form of stress that also nudges cells toward senescence. It's all about balance. We have to watch extremes in either direction. That's another reason to steer clear of diets loaded with cheap seed oils, which can push you into the realm of excessive LA consumption and unhelpful metabolic shifts. And while we know research is always evolving, staying informed helps us make smarter decisions. The more we understand about P16 versus P21, the better we can tailor future therapies. But in the meantime, we have enough clues to improve our everyday habits. Which, ironically, might mean your grandmother's advice was spot on. Eat your fruits and vegetables, don't overdo the unhealthy stuff, and get some fresh air. Turns out that's a pretty good recipe for keeping senescent cells in line. Sometimes the simplest solutions are the best. Of course, that doesn't mean we won't see advanced therapies in the future. But until that day, there's plenty we can do now. Yes, indeed. I like that we're ending on a hopeful note. We've got this dynamic interplay of aging cells, and it's not all gloom and doom. We can actually steer the process, at least partially. That's the heart of today's lesson. Senescent cells, they can heal you or they can hurt you. And understanding the difference helps you maintain that sweet spot where they do their job and then quietly vanish. So we come full circle. Dr. Mercola's insights remind us that aging is not a straightforward tale of everything falling apart. It's more like a carefully choreographed dance. And if we pay attention, we can help keep it graceful. Yes, and if the dance goes wrong, we have science to guide us toward the right senolytic solution, be it strawberries or something more high-tech in the future. Meanwhile, try not to panic next time you see a slow healing wound. Maybe just evaluate your habits, toss some extra quercetin and fisetin into the mix, and keep an eye on your intake of LA. And if you must enjoy a donut, don't let that be your entire nutritional philosophy. Balance it out with some real foods, keep your immune system alert, and maybe those senescent cells won't stage a coup. I'll remember that next time I'm eyeing the confection counter. I'll say, Elara told me to balance. That's basically permission to have half a donut and an apple, right? Absolutely. It's about compromise. A small indulgence coupled with a bigger dose of healthful foods, that's the sweet spot, quite literally. Well, I think we've covered a lot of ground, from 21's role in chronic wounds to onion peel broth. Any final pearls of wisdom, Alara? Just a reminder that your cells might be older, but you don't have to let them run the show. You've got the power to shape your internal environment. Think of senescent cells as employees. If they start slacking, you have the right to reorganize. With the right approach, you can foster a more harmonious cellular workspace. A harmonious cellular workspace. A perfect phrase to wrap up on. That's what we all want. A body that cooperates with us, not one that's locked in a perpetual protest. Exactly. On that note, thanks for joining us on Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Alara Sky, your comedic health guru, signing off with a parting tip. Next time you see your cells lazing around, gently show them the door with a bowl of strawberries and a quercetin-laced onion concoction. And I'm Ethan Foster, the subdued observer, happy to keep sipping on my morning tea with a dash of humility. Remember, a little knowledge about senescent cells goes a long way. Until next time, stay healthy 
Stay curious. Take care, everyone. We'll catch you on the next episode with more cellular insights and a dash of wit. Be good to your body, and it'll be good to you. Farewell from both of us. May your wounds heal swiftly and your onion skins be put to good use.